Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and welcome to the ongoing programming language series. This is where I'm going to focus on programming languages that are relevant to the world of game development. Either they're low level or they have good interop with existing libraries or they were optimized or written to make games. And today what we are looking at is Zik. So in this series, we're not looking at the mainstream stuff. We're not looking at Python, C Sharp, JavaScript, C, Java. We're looking more at things you probably haven't heard of. And I'm guessing a lot of you haven't heard of Zig. And there's a reason for that. First off, it is a pretty young language. You can see here, we're at the website for Zig. It is available at ziglang.org. And you will notice it is release 0.71. I believe ground was broken on the code about five years ago, which by programming language terms is a baby language. Uh, but Zig, to summarize, it as succinctly and possibly wrongly as possible, Zig is to C as Rust is to C++. I think that's the way we're going to go. Basically, it is meant to be more robust, uh, but also low level. It's a system level language. This is a compiled language, but the cool thing is the Zig compiler is also a C compiler, and it's got amazing interop with the C programming language, meaning that there are thousands of libraries out there that you can make use of, and you can make use of them about as easy as I have seen interop work, as we are going to see in just a second. So a few more details about Zig. Again, general purpose language, no hidden control flow, Low, no hidden memory allocations, no preprocessor, no macros. Those are things that I always found a little clunky in the world of C um, and probably the most abused area of C in some ways were the preprocessor and macros. Now, in a lot of cases, it's because they had to be. Um, it's uh, You can call any function at compile time, manipulate uh, types as values without runtime overhead, and comp time emulate the target architecture. And finally, we get into performance. One of the nice things with Zig is it actually supports packed structs, which is an important thing in the world of performance. Uh, if you want to go ahead and get started with Zig, it's fairly straightforward. You can grab it. Just basically go on over to the downloads page. Uh, you can download it from a variety of package managers. That's actually what I did. On Windows, I downloaded it using Chocolatey, but you can use the, the language of your choice or your package manager of your choice. Uh, or you just grab one of the archive files, extract it out, and set it in your system path, and you are ready to go with Zig. Uh, you can see here, uh, the last update was uh, the end of last year, uh, but we're looking at the master build right here. Another thing that you should probably be aware of is if you are on the Windows platform, you're a bit of a second-class citizen. That's pretty common with these kind of programming languages. So if something breaks on Windows and needs to get fixed after the fact, don't be shocked. That's just the way of the world. All right, so that is uh, the Zig entry point. Zig itself is open source. It's the MIT source code license uh, hosted up on GitHub if you want to go ahead and check that out. And we've got some more details about Zig, but first let's go jump in and I'm gonna show you some code. That code, by the way, is coming from here. This is an excellent uh, tutorial. I will link it in the article down below. It walks you through setting up Zig basically with SDL. Uh, so if you want to start using the SDL library and Zig, you can do so. By the way, if the question is, is there a runtime for Raylib? Of course there is a runtime for Raylib. There is a runtime for Raylib for every single uh, command bindings for Raylib for every single programming language ever made. And Zig is no exception. The other question is, is there a Visual Studio extension for Zig? And of course there is. There is always an extension for every programming language in Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is becoming the universal editor. And here you can see, this is some Zig code. And the thing I really want to highlight with the code, I'm not going to get into the weeds about how the syntax work and so on. If it's a language that the, the top level sound appealing to you, jump in. You're going to get the, the syntax pretty simply. It, it's very... You, you kind of look at this and it's kind of like a mashup of like uh, JavaScript and C. It's not hard to learn by any means whatsoever. But what I want to point out is this line right here. This is where it's really quite nice. So here you can see they're importing their own standard library, which is a pretty robust standard library for the most part. But here you can see where they're using their interop with C. And this is super easy. Basically, you're just doing the equivalent of a C++ pound include but you're just doing it as an at C import. And now you can use that C code in the C namespace like here. So you're basically calling various different um, SDL uh, function calls directly. Cool thing is you've got uh, deferred. So this is gonna keep it so you don't leak. So later on, it will call quit. So this makes sure that your, um, your code cleans up after itself. Uh, otherwise, the code is pretty straightforward. Uh, here you see like a while loop in action. The big thing I really wanted to highlight here is how nice the C interop is. Now, another interesting thing about Zig 
is the build files. So this is the instructions for how to build this. This is the equivalent of your project file or your make file and it's Zigcode. And that is clever. I actually like this approach to it because you don't have to learn a custom build system of any means. You just basically use Zig. And here you can see we're setting up the build. Uh, when you create a new project, it will go through this process for you. So you can start from scratch. I'll show you how to create a new project in just a second. Uh, this one, though, it has a couple of extra steps. These are the these are the requirements to point it at basically the include file, the lib files, and the DLL path of the SDL2 library. So you still have to download and configure the C libraries you work from, uh, but that is the code required to do so. And then you're gonna see here, I'm adding a step called run that is gonna go ahead and run the application. You can run your Zig application pretty straightforward. So here we are in the directory of it. So you can see here, I have my build.zig file right there. And then inside the folder source, I have our actual main source code, what we were looking at just a second ago. And to run this, just run Zig, which again, you have to add to your system path build, and then I want to add it again, the additional step of run that we defined there. And this is going to build our code and run it. Now it's actually been compiled already, so it was a very quick build, but build times are okay. They're, they're C-ish, maybe a little bit slower than C. Uh, but here you can see the example in action. This is again from the linked article. This is the SDL example and the end result. Uh, it, it's, it's a decent language. It, it's definitely an interesting one to look with. Now again, keep in mind, this is a 0.71 release and you get what you expect of that. I would not expect anyone to use this in production, uh, but for like a hobby project, or if you're interested in basically working with a low level new but simple language, uh, Zig could be a nice choice in that regard. All right, so now I told you earlier on, I was gonna show you how you could get started with Zig. Pretty simple, let's get on over to a command prompt. Let me just scroll that out so you can actually see what I'm doing here. And what we do, again, make sure Zig is in your path somewhere. Go to an empty directory. So let's gonna make a directory called uh, YouTube demo. And we're gonna change into that one and just do, you do a Zig command, press enter. You can see the, the library of what you want. And like I said earlier, you can use this as a C and C++ compiler built in, which is kind of cool. But what you're interested in here is this one right there. So what we're gonna do is a zig init exe, and then it's done. So what we're gonna notice is in your directory, it created that uh, build.zig file. And then in the source folder, it's there. So again, just a zig, you can see here. So we can do zig build exe, and it's gonna know, oh, why can't you? And then you figure that one. I'll just do zig build. All right, so there it's gonna go. It's gonna run my local code. Uh, like I said, it's built on LLVM and there, oh, I didn't, no, I'm done. Okay, oh, so I have to do zig build and then if I wanna run my code and there you can see the end result is all your code base are belong to us. So if you're curious how that actually worked out, code, we're gonna open up the current directory. Again, it creates a build file for you. So if you add new libraries or, or anything else to it, they're added here, pretty straightforward. It's saying our executable name is YouTube demo. It's to pull it from the directory name and the entry point is source slash main.zig. And again, source main.zig. And all we are doing is calling standard.log.info. All your code base are belong to us. It's basically the equivalent of hello world. And that is kind of getting started with Zig. Really quite straightforward and simple. Send them back over here. So you got some more rundowns of why this guy is, is so special to them. Uh, small, simple language, uh, performance, type safety. It competes with C instead of depending on it. It's got manual memory management. It's got generic data structures and functions. So there's where it's different than C. You get sitting there going, well, why don't I just use C? Well, generics are pretty much one of those things that we all take for granted in this world. It's added that kind of stuff. Nice thing again is it integrates with C library without bindings. It's also a C compiler. So you can export functions, variables, and types to C code to depend on. So if you want, you can go the other way and have your Zig code called from C code or C++ or whatever languages uh, are compatible with C. It's got its own build system. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting language for sure. Now you may be wondering, okay, well, what about, uh, so we got the language documentation right here. So if you wanna see what the primitives are, they're all there. They have uh, logical names unlike C, which kind of has changed. Uh, the size of an int have changed many times over life. Uh, so you can see that these are the basic language structures. It's a fairly straightforward language on the whole if you wanna come in and learn it, it's all there. Uh, and then we've got uh, also the standard library, it's what is actually included there. Well, here is the basic standard library, all those are the types. These are various different names, namespaces that are out there. So for example, you know, OS level integration, uh, there you go. I don't know why it 
it scrolled me to the bottom, but so here you see, like that's this is the standard library. It's solid. Uh, it's um, you know pretty straightforward. I imagine it's going to expand a decent amount over time. Again, do check out this setup for Zig for game development if you want to see how to get up and running uh, with uh, the SDL2 libraries. You can again, as I mentioned earlier on, if in, uh, you're interested in the world of game development, another one worth checking out is Raylib. Once again, Raylib has bindings for every language you could possibly imagine. Uh, and if we keep going, you will discover Raylib-Zig is a thing. So if you want to work with a different and another really interesting C-style library, you can do so. Another one of the cool things here is, again, it doesn't really need bindings that much. So all you can really, you could go ahead and just basically uh, wrap it like we showed earlier on with that C import and just start calling Raylib functions. You don't really need to set up bindings if you don't want to. Uh, but if you're interested, there are a pretty defined set of bindings for Raylib. So if you're just getting started, it will make your life easier and more simple. Uh, so SDL, easy to work with. Uh, Raylib, easy to work with. And Zig, uh, definitely one worth checking out. So again, if you're interested in Zig, again, I'm going to summarize it as uh, Zig is to C as Rust is to C++ uh, and it's available at ziglang.org so if you ever use Zig if so let me know what you think comments down below and are you looking for a language to scratch a certain itch because like, there are certain combinations you want the simplicity of C but modern language convenience like Zig provides or is there like a certain other thing that's out there so we've covered a couple of the interesting ones like if you took um, C sharp and got rid of some of the low performance stuff. Hey, that's how you got beef. And there's some interesting languages out there. If there's a specific language you'd like to see me cover, please let me know that in the comments down below. And I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.